Hi, I'm going to show you how to get started with indexing on FamilySearch.org. Uh, first of all, you want to go to FamilySearch.org slash indexing, or if you go to FamilySearch.org, click on indexing. When you get to this page, this has some overview information about uh, indexing, and you can go through a tour to understand what it is and to uh, see step-by-step -step how to get into it. Uh, but really, you'll find the actual bulk of your work will be done inside of web indexing. If you click on that, here you can see uh, a section called My Batches, as well as messages that you get from FamilySearch.org. And you can see your progress on your previous um, projects or your goals. I have some pretty high goals here and haven't had any time to work on them this month so far. But um, you can also see Really, most importantly, you want to go here to where it says Find Batches. You click on that. And so there's a lot of batches of indexing records that uh, need to be indexed from all over the world in different languages. And obviously, you can filter them out um, so that if you only speak English or only want to work on something that's easy, you can um, filter the difficulty levels so you can say like I want to work on beginning levels things in English which you can type and then select from a list when you click search you'll see some easy to work on English things so for example the New York County naturalization records from 1792 to 1976 or this one let's get started with one of these we'll click on index and we'll jump right into it and you don't have to install anything it all just works using your browser as soon as you open an indexing batch you'll notice there's some instructions if this is the first time you've been to this page or, or looking at this batch and the instructions are really important to read because they tell you how to handle certain data certain ways for example in some projects when you come across um, misspelled city names they tell you to keep the spelling no matter if it's misspelled or not and sometimes they tell you to fix the spelling if you think you know how to fix the spelling you know with different different things like country names or city names or state names they'll tell you to fix it sometimes they tell you not to fix it but this different uh, the different instructions here are specific to this project and it's really helpful to read through all of them because it also helps you to, to understand how the how the records were were kept. So assuming you do that um, and you go through the instructions, then really the first things that it wants you to do is identify whether or not this image is an image that can be indexed. Like in other words, does it have um, data on it that you can index? And you can zoom in using the scroll wheel on your mouse or using the plus button here. Um, or by pinching and zooming if you're on your mobile browser or on a, a touch screen. But you can see that there is some data here to be indexed. And so you can just leave it here as yes and go to the next image. If you felt like this was a duplicate image of a previous record and like, oh, I already indexed this one already, you can mark it as a duplicate image. If you think that there's just no way to read the data on here or there, it's blank, you can say there's no extractable data. But you'll go through each one of the records in the batch and this batch has 10 images and so you'll go through and say whether or not this one is indexable and so you will you think yes the next one is two apparently and they look like all they don't look like duplicates it looks like there's images to be indexed so you can go through all of them marking them as yes so once you do that you'll actually get started on your first record. And so here it wants to know the document or certificate number. And if you read the instructions, it'll tell you how to find the document or certificate number, which is usually up here. And the instructions are specific to, the, to that record, to those batches. The one thing I did want to point out is that you don't necessarily have to input data um, this way, where it's like uh, field by field. You can change the data entry to be like a form and so 
for example, here's all the data they want for this given record. Um, and it should be found on this document. Or you can change it to be like a table um, this way where you see it above you. And this just may affect you if you, you know, if you're, if you feel more comfortable doing it this way, then, um, then that's fine. You can also change it to be uh, column entry, which we saw, and then row entry, which is similar to table entry. Um, but yeah, different ones will have different benefits. Um, I personally like doing census records with column entry, and so you do all of one column and all of two columns, but that's when you have data that's in a tabular table form. It's easy to just go down the column and do all the data, but this is this is, is not necessarily conducive to doing column entry, but more like form entry. So you fill out one person's entire information here, and then you can go to the next person. So yeah, that's it. Uh, once you are finished, you'll see instructions. Well, it'll tell you your you know congratulations, you're done. You would click next image if you're finished with this one and you go on and on until you're finished with all of the images um, one thing you'll see here too is do you see an, any more information on this image to index the image isn't necessarily the page it's the whole picture and see you can see here that there's two different records so you would want to create entry two. you would want to click this button because there's a second person on this image and then you'll fill out the, the information for this second page over here. All right, that's it. Hope that helps.